안녕하세요. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of my channel. And today, if you came in, I'm sure you wanted to find out a little bit about um studying in Korea, living in Korea, or maybe you just wanted to know a little bit about how someone lives in Korea. And although I feel like there's really a lot of vlogs that talk about it, I just wanted to share my personal experience. I mean, how many foreigners do you find actually married? studying masters in KU and blah 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 so if this is the path exactly that you want to follow well not exactly every step but from you know from the scholarship to now maybe you're in for a treat um today i titled the video things you should know before living in korea it's because i feel basically the overall of this video i wanted to tell you about how i used to be before I came to Korea and how I am kind of now cuz I feel like honestly I changed a lot if you watch my previous videos here or here about staying in Korea what is like the study here so now after graduating yes I just wanted to talk a little bit about it so today instead of just talking I'm gonna do a simple get ready with me introducing my daycare routine and my nightcare routine and I'm gonna do the makeup and skincare that I did for my graduation. Okay, so let's get started. First and foremost, um, I just wanted to introduce a little bit of the skincare that I use in the morning. Always, 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 always want to cool your face in the morning is because you want to depuff it. I always just use this too. Firstly, this one is for like brightening because vitamin C removes dark spots, does wrinkles, and helps to like because I put it in the fridge, cools down the face. And then this one, I, mean, I use it alternately or one each sometimes. So this one is from Skin 1004, the Centella Coming Pad, and again soothing coming down the face depuffing the face so this two work hand in hand every morning today i'm gonna use this one because as you can see i squeezed my nose a little bit yesterday because it's a bit red one patch two patch mm. okay i wanted to briefly tell you about like how i got here i am actually a global korea scholarship recipient in 2020 and i came to Korea at that time because I, I received the scholarship to study language for one year and master's for two years and that's the reason why you can see me in my graduation gown so um that happened oh my gosh almost three years ago already I feel like I've come like a really long way since then from being the immature self of not being able to accept Korea and things to now being able to live in a home of my own in Korea that might be you one day. I also wanted to say that the KGSP, the applications are open now. So if you are um, aspiring an education in Korea, be it language, master's, degree, PhD, be sure to apply in the Korea Embassy website in Singapore, okay? So that's how you find out the details. They are always very um, prompt with uploading when do you have to apply for what. So be sure to check that out, okay? Now, Always hydrating your face in the morning. I always use this one, as you can see. Bottles is, is, is finishing ready. So today, I will only introduce skincare that I really, really use. You know, there's some skincare that you test out, but so, these are the skincare that I want to finish the bottles. This is the Miguhara Water and Peel. So what I always do is, it looks so cute, like a water droplet, right? Always just put like two drops on my face. and. Just try to massage it in. Morning face massage to let the blood circulate. So firstly, what you need to know is everybody always ask me, Jeanette, do you need to know Korean before coming to Korea? Yes, you need to know Korean before coming to Korea. Okay, so why do I say that? Firstly, I think yes, Korea has become a very like globalized country in the sense that they do accept foreigners. However, they are still at a level that they are very shy to speak to foreigners and um, to speak English in that sense. And that's the reason why sometimes it's hard to approach them because it's going to be a bit difficult for them to sort of tell you or like answer you and that's the reason why you may need to speak korean when you come here of course if you don't know korean it's fine too it's just that you might have to struggle a little bit at the beginning um for myself in my case i did struggle even though i know korean and i think it's because my korean wasn't like very fantastic to begin with and i have became not very independent over the last few years depending on naughty so if you're a very independent person kudos to you you might be able to do that if you're thinking whether do i need korean 
maybe to rephrase it in a better way i think it's better if you do have some kind of korean foundation in terms of like reading the words maybe pronouncing the words it might help because as long as you know how to read it somehow it gets you if you watch enough drama and um k variety so first and foremost do you need korean language yes you do and in my experience why is it so important is because after you move to master's education at first of course when i was in my korean language school you don't really need korean because you're gonna learn korean right however when you move to master's education especially if your master's education is in korean you definitely need to have like a really good grasp of Korean. If not, you're gonna struggle like me. Cause like I've mentioned before, I feel like my education is a little bit short changed in the sense that I only feel that I only receive 80% of what I learn because of the language that I don't understand. However, um, I don't regret it because I feel that my Korean improved a lot in that sense. Korean language, okay? Next up tea tree serum okay so why do i always use tea tree serum because i have like a little bit bumps on my face especially when it gets dry it's winter it gets dry however when it gets too hot in the summer humid also i'll get like small bumps so this will help to keep it away anything sika anything tea tree what's perfect for me i do have a little bit of sensitive skin so maybe if you are very on the sensitive side this might not apply to you because it might sting because my mom is a little bit on the sensitive side but mine is kind of like mild sensitive so this really works for me the green i've talked about it in a video before but this is really good as you can see it's finishing so usually i just put one two three pumps on my face and just massage it in once again so my face is a little bit on the oily side, especially my T-zone here. So I try not to use like oily product. These products that I'm recommending, not only for global audience, but especially for my Singaporean friendsies. I'm trying to introduce products that is very suitable for humid weather. Um, only because I'm Singaporean, I'm speaking up for a Singaporean because I cannot speak up for like an Indonesian or Malaysian because we're just different race right however like i'm chinese singaporean so it might apply i'm not sure if that works in that sense but okay that's how we do it yeah the next part that i want to advise you on is when you come to korea and you're studying everything is kind of set up for you in terms of visa but when it comes to visa it's very very important to know what kind of visa will you get after you graduate okay so i don't have the issue right now because i'm married and i am on a spouse visa so spouse visa is actually an f visa and when you're studying any kind of things in korean it's a d visa okay and then there is this other kind of visa called e visa which is employment visa okay so let me of break it down for you i don't know a all the kinds of visa but being able to interact with friends here and there a lot of foreigner friends i kind of figured out um, a few of the visas that might be helpful for you guys so this is the next thing that you want to check out on if you're going to come to korea to study first and foremost if you're coming to study if you're studying language it's d4 visa basically it's a korean language study visa I would say that not a lot of people know but it is applicable to every single person in the world you just have to go to the Korea embassy in your country to apply for it but to apply for it you have to make sure that you get acceptance first in the Korean university that you want to study so for example you want to study in Sogangde Sogang University or Songyeonggwonde or Yonsede or Koryode okay so there's language school in all this or Ide Ihwa Deak let's say in this language school you have to sort of approach them directly you go to them and you tell them like hey i want to study here and then of course if you don't know korean you can like um, exchange emails in english because they have a global office so don't be daunted okay they have a global office you can speak in english and once you get your acceptance you pay your money somehow using like tt transfer telegraphic transfer of money in different currencies after you get acceptance then you can apply for your visa in the korean embassy so i feel like a lot of students are um, people don't really know about this part so that's the reason why i talk about it as the d4 visa okay so after for us gk students after you are in d4 you'll move on to studying in like a national or a regular program in university just like the korean students that is a d2 visa so that's basically studying in any kind of university but not language in Korea. So that was what I was on for for two years. It's the two education visa that I wanted to sort of briefly talk about because that's the main. I was mentioning before there is the E visa and there's the F visa. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the E visa first. However, let me 
Let me just put a little bit of vitamin C serum on my face. So I have been using this vitamin C boosting serum from Dr. Althea. I have saw people talk about it and that's the reason why I opened it like about a week ago to try. As you can see, I used a little bit already and it is so soothing for my face. I'm not sure about clearing dark spots or acne scars because I've heard how vitamin C helps with that. However, um, I just want to like sort of give my face a glow because I've been a bit like chotota really lately because of like stress and stuff which I'll talk about in another video but that's what I usually do and you can see that the consistency of the serum is really nice it's not like liquidy, it's a little bit semi um, serum plus liquid so it's really nice on the face so this is what I do in the morning like that Some vitamin C serum might be very like, how do I say, toke, not toke, like it's a little bit too intense for your face and this one is a very light version so especially those who have sensitive skin, this will be a better alternative because it doesn't sting the face, you know, sometimes it stings the face and I'm very particular about it, like why would you put skincare that stings your face so no, no, right, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work so you can just try to change but this one really helps if you're looking for something that brightens your face Moving on to E Visa. The only E Visa I know is actually E6 Visa and E7 Visa. E6 Visa, this one is a entertainment visa. So basically, only a company can give you this visa in the sense that you become like a, you know, it's trending nowadays. You become an influencer, content creator, or like, um, I don't know, entertainment, like actor, singer, anything in the entertainment industry. E6, they will give this one to you, the E6 Visa. And of course, it must be applied for you from a company or agency that you are in. So I have, I do have some friends that I know are on E6 visa. However, <clears throat> there's this other visa, E7 visa. It's a visa that is given from a company, any kind of company. This one's entertainment company, but this one is any kind of company, be it like marketing or um, your big taggy ups, your big companies, anything, any kind of company will give you E. E7 visa for a foreigner. What's so disadvantageous about these two employment visas is it is very, very, very tight to the company in the sense that if, like just everything is tied to them, if you're on a two year contract, after this contract end, you just have to go back if they don't want to renew your visa. So everything depends on the company, like you have no, not much say. And on the other hand, the company does pay a lot of money to apply these visas for you because there's quota right in every country in terms of like foreigner to local. So if you have these two visas, you just have to stay in the company. If not, the moment you're out of the company, you're out of the visa, okay? So this is the two employment visa that you have to take note of. And last but not least is the F visa. So F visa, I know a total of three, three F visas. Basically, F I think just stays for I don't know what F stands for, but basically it's a residence visa, okay? So it's a bit like in Singapore terms, the permanent PR visa, but in different forms, okay? So let me break it down for you while putting my moisturizer. So I've been using this rice cream from iFrom and I have been a big fan of rice creams ever since like long ago. I think Korean is so smart, they came out with the cream with rice. Like who thinks of that? Like and they make so much stuff from natural and natural ingredients, which makes me feel like I want to use them, right? So okay, because the it's not it looks thick. You can see it's finishing. It looks thick, but it's not thick at all. So what I usually do is I just do this, and I'll just apply it on my face. Really, really smooth out. And it feels like smoothing out the pores. That's the most important part. And it's very, very, very hydrating. That's the reason why I use it. The one that I'm on is F. Six visa and basically this visa you can only get if you're married to a Korean be it you're the girl or the guy okay it is a very simple process depending on which country you come from so I know of friends from like Malaysia Indonesia they do struggle with it because of the relationships they have with Korea however for Singaporeans it's super easy all you have to do is you have to apply for there's a application online you just have to download it fill it up and then you just have to apply for this uh, your I'm not married thing from Singapore and you just have to get it shipped to Korea. You go to the embassy, you notarize it, you bring these two documents to the Kuchong, which is the, not the Kuchong, uh, the community center, the main office. I always go to Sejong Kuchong because they are more, um, the Chunggu side, because they are more, how do I say, 
friendly to foreigners. They have like a basically a wayugin like a puso, a foreigner booth for you to attend. So they kind of like used to it. So when you go there, um, you just submit it and you'll get it on the date that you want. Okay, so that is the spouse visa that I'm on. And then talk, moving on to the F2 visa. See, the F2 visa is like a it's not permanent residency, it's just a residency visa. There is this system in Korea whereby you have to accumulate points to apply for a visa, be it like attending like Korean culture class or like how much do you earn in a year, um, insurance, are you paying well, like tax and all these kind of things. I don't really know the detail because I didn't go to that path, but maybe I can find out more if you want to know. Please leave it in the comment section and I'll try to find out more about it. But that's the F2 visa, okay? Then, I'm gonna put more on my nose because it's like pain. Um, the last but not least, the F5 visa. That's like the highest, highest, highest visa that you can get as a foreigner in Korea. Basically, it's just a permanent residency visa. It's PR. Gonna be a little bit easier for me because I can, um, I'm, a, I'm a spouse of a Korean. To get the F5 visa, every single person have to go through something called KIIP. Basically, KIIP stands for Korean Immigration and Integration Program, something like that whereby you have to learn about Korean culture, how does the system work and all that. They kind of teach you what to do. And then, after taking that and getting the test, if you pass, then you can start to apply for your F5 visa. And it depends on what visa you were on before for you to attain this. So for me, F6, I just have to be on F6 for two years and I can start applying for F5 visa. And what's so good about these visas for F is the better the visa is the longer um you get to stay in this country without being without having to renew it so f6 you have to do it once a year if you have a kid once every two years and if you're on f2 you have to renew it i think once every year or two years something like that i'm not very sure if you guys don't live in the comment section down below to help the people who are watching and for f5 is the best because you only have to renew it every 10 years okay so everybody's trying to aim for that and so am I. So I'm going to get it done this year, okay? That's all the visas I know. And I wanted to share with you guys because I think it's very important to know after coming here, if you have a thought of like continuing your, not just your studies, but your life in Korea, you have to know more about it. Oh, there's one visa that I forgot. People who finish their grad, as in graduate from their school and want to stay in Korea, you have to go you have to apply for something called a d10 visa so it's under like the study one but basically d10 visa is a job seeking visa you only can get it if you studied in korea for this visa you only can renew it two times basically it means that you can stay and every two, every time you renew it's six months so you can stay here for about one and a half years basically this visa talk is so long that i haven't even put my thumb block okay so Last but not least, for my daycare routine, I always put this sunblock. I mean, I do switch around because sunblocks is love for me. Sunblock is so important to me because I feel that if you don't put anything, you just have to put a moisturizer and sunblock because it helps to protect your face so and your skin so much. So please do not forget sunblock. Okay, sunblock is so important, especially in a hot and humid country in Singapore. You might feel like, oh, but it's hot, it's humid, it's sticky and stuff. No, you just have to find one that's not sticky and I found one for you. This one, the Misha one is almost finished and you can see how bad the cover is. This is how much I've been using it. I'm not sure if they sell it still, I think they do, but this one they call it the Sun Melt. It's Misha. I got this one because it has a matte finish. Like, I don't like something that, I mean sometimes I do like the glowy finish, but let's say I'm using a like cushion for the day, glowy cushion, then I don't have to have a glowy finish, right? So I usually just put like a palm like this size on my face and then I just put it does leave a little bit of white cast but I help I feel like it helps to brighten my face and it smells really good so I've been using this um sun milk like all my years in SQ because at that time there were many many brands that were not out yet but this is like for me share right it's like, it's like a big brand so that's the one reason why I've been using it and my face is so smooth. Can you see? Next two things that I want to talk about is a little bit hand in hand. But I wanted to talk a little bit about what you need to know about housing in Korea and cost of living in Korea. So it kind of comes hand in hand. That's the reason why I'm going to talk together. So first and foremost, I just want to say that housing is really not cheap in Korea. I did explain um, the system a little bit in another video. So I'm not going to elaborate it here. Especially Korea house prices are rising so much that... Nowadays, it costs at least 
700 to 800 to get actually a decent one room. I mean, of course, if you go even lower, you will be able to find something as well, but you have to compromise. For example, if you're near to the subway or bus stop, then your house will be smaller or more expensive. But if you're a little bit further away, it might look a bit bigger and prettier. Okay, so it really depends on what's important to you. For me, being bigger and prettier is really important to me. So being away from the subway, I'm okay to just like move up because I stayed always at home, right? And how do you get to these houses is you have to go through a system called Pudongsan. And these Pudongsans are mostly in Korean. I, I'm sure they have foreigner friendly one nowadays. I'm not sure of what it is, but maybe I can if you ask me, I'll try to look for it in the comment section down there. But off my head, I don't know any. But I'm sure there is. So you want to connect with them. And then you want to look at the house. Look at the pictures before you buy. As in, before you stay and give your deposit. Nowadays, there's so, so many scams on it. So please be careful before you come to Korea. Do look at the house. Get some recommendations from your friends so that you don't get cheated. Okay? And then that's the housing side. And for the cost of living, I would say that in Korea... I would say it's kind of similar to Singapore. I wouldn't say it's more expensive. It's because in Korea, whenever you go, wherever you go, and a lot of Singaporeans don't know this, when you go to any cafe, any restaurant, anywhere you sit down and eat, except for maybe Starbucks, you have to order one person, one portion. I know in Singapore, it's a bit like, oh, let's order and share together. But no, in Korea, if you go to any restaurant, you have to order one person, one portion. Every cafe, one person, one coffee before you sit down. And a lot of people don't know that. And I think, honestly, the Koreans are okay with it because they know you're a foreigner and you don't really understand that. But you do have to do that every time you go into a restaurant, okay? Or a cafe. But apart from that, um, cost of living is kind of similar. You get like same price for one portion. I'm, I'm comparing one portion, right? Of something in Singapore and something in Korea. So if you're in Singapore, you think like, oh, it's so expensive and stuff. Actually, when you come to Korea, you're on holiday. That's why you think it's not expensive. It's kind of similar. It's expensive here as well. However, if you're living here like me, you're just like eating from home. You just buy your stuff and cook. Then it's fine, I guess. You just like simple panchan and stuff and you cook at home as well. So in that sense, if you don't really eat out or do deliver that much, because I know Singapore do a lot of grab delivery nowadays or so, it's kind of similar, I feel like. Every month we spend about 300-ish, 400 on groceries and I think that's fine for a two-person household. Um, amenities and stuff like that, it's also almost the same. We have Daiso here as well. And then if you talk about like electricity, water, gas, because I start paying for my own already. I've talked to my parents, it, maybe it's a little bit cheaper in Korea, I would say. But I think because in Singapore, you use a lot of aircon and it's hot and here sometimes different season. but Every country has its pros and cons, right? So this is the maybe difference. But I would say cost of living, very, very similar to Singapore. Last point of the things you really need to know before coming here to live or study. But I just wanted to introduce a little bit of what I use at night. It's a little bit more, how do I say, rich because I'm going to sleep with it, right? Nighttime skincare, I always use this retinol patch because it's been raving on TikTok and Instagram. This reason, you know how they pull the pad and like put on the face. Love! It's like a it's like a mask studio, right? I always use this and eye patches at night because you know, I can use it in the morning to depuff the eyes also, but this vitamin C one really helps a lot in terms of like trying to brighten the dark circle, so I use it at night. Rito shot. This VD Rito shot really feels like I'm going for a facial micro needling. I can feel like it sort of smoothens my skin barrier. Also, it, because they always use it, ask you to use it at the beginning of your nighttime skincare routine. I use it already. Then, um, how do I say? I can feel like the products that I use after that is able to like go in even more. This has the same effect as the Medicube of Booster H. So um, nowadays I've been using this because I was gifted this and it's so so good. I'm using the 100 one, they have the 300 and 700. So it really depends. 300 it means you can use only 3 times a week, 700 once a week, okay? So you can use every day. So this product not many people talk about, the C Cita Reti A. So basically it's Cica plus retinol together, okay? Retinol is so important after you turn 30 or you can start at 25 or so anytime. It's very important for your face and trying to smoothen the fine lines, wrinkles, remove dark spots. Basically, retinol is like a magic for your face. Moisturizer. I have to use moisturizer, of course. 
This Rovectin one, I see, I haven't used much yet, but every time I use, I just like really pour my face. It's like uh, trying to cool everything down. So I leave this in the fridge so that I can use it. So this one is the Hyaluronic Essence. I feel like this is one of the best Hyaluronic Essence that I have uh, discovered so far. Actually gifted by Rovectin. This is super, super good. It feels like a bit like mucin. Let me show you a little bit. It's not that sticky, but it's not snail mucin. It's not like bean essence. So I really like this one because it's hydrating, right? It doesn't feel sticky, That's a, it's like a bit semi, okay? That's the reason why I like it. And the last but not least, this too. I always use these two creams at night because as you can see from the word, relief cream and soothing cream. This is the like my to-go cream. Can you see this one is almost finished? Because this is almost finished from number zine, number four, number one. I'm using this one from Dr. Elkia. It really helps like to set the skin for the night and trying to like lock everything in. This relief cream has been like my go-to as you can see. It's a bit like a toothpaste, yeah. I just squeeze it and like, like twirl the end. But this is so, so good. I've been using it and it really helps me to sort of reset my face for the next day. I do use eye cream also. This one's done by me, retinol. But the thing about retinol here is because it's a very thin layer of eye, um, skin here, right? So you don't want to use too much. You only want to use like a little bit. I can use a little bit now for you to see. So I usually just use pea drops like this too. And then I just put it on my eye area. Because it does sting because it's um, quite intense retinol, right? So I don't want to use too much and I usually just dab it in. I don't rub because once you rub, you get wrinkles. Yay! Okay. So that's the nighttime skincare routine. When I move on to the next point, uh, my last point, I'm just going to start by doing my makeup for the graduation. Time for makeup now. I have my mirror with me and my makeup bag. So today, I'm just going to do the makeup that I did exactly for my graduation. I mentioned uh, the thing that you really need to know is about school life. I'm sure that's the reason why you came in because I studied right in KU. And what I really wanted to tell you is first, let me put it out there that this is a very objective opinion of what I went through. But I just wanted to sort of um, warn you guys because I mean, you have to know the good and bad right before coming. This is the newest uh, cushion from Fui. I really, really like it. It's in 1.5 peach glass. So I like to tone up my face a little bit. I think I'm on number two, but I just wanted to use this one. <coughs> this is the color and I'm just gonna start doing it, okay? I feel like what really sort of changed me about school life is the professor experience. Okay, so basically when I first um, went into school, I'm not sure if I mentioned before, I feel like I wasn't really very competent because um, it just wasn't easy for me to um, not know that much Korean and then um, start my master's degree. That's the reason why just now I told you Korean language is super super important I'm not sure if it's like this in other countries as well, but when you are studying in um, This Korean university, I feel like your, the ma the professor becomes like of the king and queen of um, The whole department and basically everything you do depends on that It's not that you pay the school fees you get everything you want. We are not served we really have to, and not that we serve them as well, but you just have to be careful which professor you pick. If you pick a professor that's super busy, you're never going to get replies and you're never going to graduate. And I had a professor that was not very, very busy. However, um, I managed to graduate, but in my opinion, she was already very busy, but I have no idea what she's busy with. So that was kind of like the downside. I mean, I love my professor. She's really nice. It was really hard to get replies for her and I remember how stressful it is when I needed to rush for deadlines and sometimes she gives me a very vague answer that I don't really know what she wants because she's the one who's going to like graduate me. So it makes me really stressed out. So I think picking a professor, the right professor for you, it's going to be very important. And I want to say that please do not pick a very busy professor. If you are with a professor that's very popular and has a lot of students, Good luck to you, friend, because it's going to be really... Just picked her because she's a girl, plus she speaks English. And that was really important to me because I don't think I was good enough for Korean, basically. So anyways, that is the first advice I wanted to give you. Be very, very um, picky about your professor, okay? This is the face of a full um, Korean cushion padded face. So this is what I look like right now. It's not really lighter, right? It's okay, right? Looks fine. Um, the next advice that I wanted to give you guys is 
apart from the professor, you have to be very, very particular about the degree that you want to pick. Honestly, when I was studying, uh, I felt the only regret that I have was I wish I picked a degree in English because, like I said, it's really, really hard to study in Korean when your Korean is not good. And even if your Korean is good, it's going to be hard. If your mother tongue is English and you have no like, I need to know Korean, I would advise you to pick a major in English. And usually that will be in the global, the international studies department. Which I, which not, it's not that I didn't like it, but I didn't pick that because I really wanted to study, study psychology. But you have to suffer like me then. So you have to be very, 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 very sure about what you want to pick. Because I remember when I came in, I was super lost because of Korean. And I was even more lost because I was supposed to write a thesis, but it didn't work out the way that they wanted. So, that I wanted. So that was super important to me. It's really not easy to study um, something so in-depth in Korean or in a language that you don't know. And you have to communicate with your friends, your professors in Korean, so that's going to be really tough. Because I was the only foreigner and you know that's the only foreigner, foreigner struggle, okay? So that's the second part about school that I wanted to tell you about and you should know before coming. Trust, Jete. Trust on ni nuna. The last thing that I wanted to tell you about school that you don't really know is, basically, I don't know if I should say this, but honestly, the Korean admin here is just crap. Like, they're not very good at what they do. Not because they're not good at their job, it's because they don't communicate within departments. And because of that, it gave me so much stress. I'm sure you guys who are journeying with me, in, like, ever since I started school, you know how hard it is to sort of be in this, like, thing together. It's just so difficult. So that's the reason why I feel like you have to be very particular and like very very involved in the admin process in the sense that you must know what you need to write, what to do and don't trust their work fully like take it with a pinch of salt when they say like oh you need this, 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 this then you must ask like are you sure there's nothing else that I need? Are you sure? Are you sure? Like I always clarify three times because when I go there, then be like, oh, you need this. I'm just like, oh, you didn't tell me. I already asked you. And I'll be very sure to ask for the person name. After a while, you sort of get the hang of it. So admin work is something, the last thing that you have to be very, very particular about because when you do it last minute, you really like no time, okay? No time to sort of recover the loss. And it really pisses me off because sometimes they make deadlines, but I mean, sometimes they do let you away. Eyeshadow. Laka. They do let you extend the deadline. I like this peachy one because I don't know, it's just light and sort of make my eyes a bit pop. So that you can like finish all that trouble in one, one shot, okay? So basically, that is like the three things that I wanted to talk about that you have to take note of about when you want to study in Korea. But particularly when you want to study in Korea, okay? After I'm applying this in my blush and my lip, I just wanted to talk a little bit about um, at the beginning I mentioned what has changed throughout the years. I really struggled a lot with um, studying, uh, like being in Korea, the Korean culture and stuff like that. And I do talk about it once in a while in my videos, but I don't want to be like on too negative side because I chose to come to Korea and that's the like, not consequence, but something that I have to learn, right? And I would say that I think over the years, I kind of learned it quite well. I would, I mean, honestly, looking back, I can't believe this is how much I already changed. So I'm kind of like proud of myself in a sense. Wow. <laughs> pet, pet Jeanette. Korean culture honestly doesn't feel as foreign like before. I'm not sure because after I married, I, I sort of like changed my status and I feel like I, it's something that I have to learn. But then again, I also feel that um, Korean in-laws and a family gives me gave me like a very global experience and helped me to sort of find my place in Korea basically. It helped me sort of become rooted even more than before. You want to really stay in Korea being married is probably the best immersion, cultural immersion that you can ever get. But if not, I guess staying in Korea will be a very very um, good alternative as well. Put some sparkles. Just cause I want to feel fabulous today. So I'm going to put some sparkles on my eyes. I found like a nicer sparkle than this Peri Pera one. Like literally, like beaded sparkles, can you see? I wanted to say that actually I changed a lot. I think because I am um, I do call this place my home now. Like I kind of settled down in Korea already in the sense that because I'm married, I have my own home and stuff like that. Cause 
and that's the reason why it's maybe probably a little bit easier for me in that sense to sort of call this place my home i do know of uh, foreigners who still struggle a lot staying in korea but i guess it gets better with time and you know like they always say time heals wounds and i feel like that has been um particularly very um true for my case i would say that actually korea it's a very very lovely place to stay in um in a sense that everything is fast everything is convenient efficient and um it has four seasons i mean who doesn't like four seasons you you people travel here just to see that right k-pop k-drama everything is just very very magical in the sense and i am doing videos so that i can sort of um introduce more of this to you whatever is new and stuff so that you guys can come here to sort of um experience it yourself yeah so that's the reason why i'm sort of making videos and why i wanted to be very honest about um my experience today we were thinking oh why should i come to korea oh by the way i'm using this one etude blusher i have been using the free blushes and i've talked a lot about it but this has been my go-to ever since i was flying the cookie blusher is sweet coral candy i only only like this color so much easier powder blush i mean if you want something more pigmented then of course the free, free one works but today i just wanted to go a bit lighter and um of course replicate what i did for my graduation day i want to try the sewing blush thing but i haven't mastered it yet so please give me a chance yeah as that is what i have changed over the years so now let me wrap up the video after i show you some magic i changed this is the graduation um outfit from the korea university so this is what it looks like basically there's a stash there's a hat with this on the left side and then look at how cool i look tiger feels okay, so this is the certificate that i got so let's just see what's inside basically it's just saying that um i got the master of arts in psychology and this is how prestigious it looks this is the thesis that I wrote. Can you see how thick it is? It looks really like cool, right? Like I really, I really did read thesis, guys. Okay, it was really very tough, but I'm so so glad it ended. Up. Yes, and from Korea University. Ta da! Okay, so these two babies, I worked so hard for it for the last two years, and I am so so proud of myself and thankful that I finished. Even though along the way, sometimes in life I do struggle with things, I feel like um, it does remind me of how powerful human will and determination is. So if you are watching this video and you're thinking you're very very inspired and want to come here, I am no special person that could have done this. But um, I would say that there was a lot of support along the way, especially from you guys as well, that helped me to sort of finish this thing. And um, I hope that one day, if right now you're watching this video and you're considering, yes, I want to come to Korea to study, please, please do come because I feel like there's so much more that you can gain. And um, of course, you lose some along the way, but that's just life. And I feel that if you just need some kind of faith or someone to push you, I'm going to push you do it now go and find your application i hope that this will give you a new direction in life it will help you to find out what you really want to do in life all of it is paid for i hope you qualify you need some tips with interview how to write the application remember to let me know but if it's not the scholarship you just want to come in and stay do consider it as well because it's going to be um really a change in your life so if you're looking for some encouragement, do cough it. Three years have taught me so, so many things and I'm very, very thankful for this opportunity once again. And I hope that you guys will be able to sort of um, experience that all at once. This is my heartfelt wish to all of you guys watching this video. I really hope one day you will be able to wear this graduation shirt like me. Come out of a prestigious uni and get, you know, just be able to achieve your dream, the dream that you have always dreamed of. Able to speak Korean, just a little bit like me. You're the best and I love you. Return this already, I'm feeling kind of sad that I have to return it because you can't buy it. But thank you so much for joining me in this video. I hope that it has inspired you and helped you in some ways. And I will see you in the next one. But I'm done. Peace out.